Section 1-2, analyzing graphs of functions and relations. We, have, we start with example 2, domain and range. It uses a graph of f to find the domain and range of the function. The domain is the x values that are used to graph the function. And so we start with negative 8 and we're going to use all the x values until we get to negative 4. Now negative 4 is not actually used. We don't have a function value for negative 4. And then we're going to use all the values then from negative 4, not including that value, all the way to infinity. This function goes uh, up to infinity, but it, it's also going to the right forever as well. So the domain for this function is, let's see, we have, uh, we include negative 8, so we have a bracket. So negative 8 to negative 4, we don't include negative 4. But then we start with negative 4 again, not including it, uh, to infinity. And we always put a parenthesis with infinity. The range is all the y values that we use to graph this function. And we are we using negative, uh, let's see, negative 2, 4, 6, negative 8. We're using negative 10. And then we're using all of the y values shooting up to infinity. Now, even though we don't have a y value of 4 here, we do have a y value of 4 there. So as long as you use it once, you can count it in the range. So this uh, range is going from negative 10 to infinity. Use a graph of g to find the domain and range of each function. The domain, that's the x values that we use, and we're using uh, x values from negative 2 all the way to 6. So we're including negative 2, but not including 6. The y values that are used is, is 0. We are using 0, even though we don't use it here. And then we're using all the y values up to 4. Uh, so the range is 0 to 4. On 2b, uh, let's start with domain again, of course. Uh, that's the x's. We're using x values of, from negative 4, not including negative 4. Whoops, that, that's a bracket. So negative 4 to, let's see, we're going to... We don't actually use 2, but we use all the values up to 2. So negative 4 to 2, and then we use uh, 2, 2. Uh, that's an arrow. This is going to go to the right forever and down. So 2 to infinity. The range is, let's see, we're using negative infinity all the way up to uh, negative 2. So negative infinity to negative 2, and we are not including negative 2. And then we union that with, uh, we have y values of 6. A point where a graph intersects or meets the x or y axis is called an intercept. An x-intercept of a graph occurs where y equals 0. A y-intercept of a graph occurs where x equals 0. The graph of a function can have 0, 1, or more x-intercepts, but at most, one y-intercept. So the x-intercepts is where the graph crosses the x-axis, the y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. To find the y-intercept of a graph of function, f algebraically, find f of 0. Use the graph of each function to approximate its y-intercept, then find the y-intercept algebraically. So on this one, I estimate the y-intercept to be oh, about 1.3, I would say. And to find the y-intercept, that's where x is 0. We go 0 on the x-axis, and then we go along the y-axis. So let's plug 0 in for x. We need f of 0 to find y-intercepts. We have negative 2 times 0 to the third plus 4 over 3. That is uh, 4 thirds, which is 1.3. Keep repeating. On letter B, we're going to find g of 0. Oh, I need to estimate first. 1, 2, 3, 4. I estimated at 4. G of 0 is equal to 0 minus 5 minus 1. That's the absolute value of negative 5 minus 1. That's 5 minus 1, and it actually is 4. So the y-intercept for this one is 0, 4. The y-intercept over here is 0, 4 thirds. The x-intercept of the graph of a function are also called the zeros of a function. The solutions of the corresponding equation are called the roots of the equation. To find the zeros of a function, f, set the function equal to zero and solve for the independent variable. So for y-intercepts, we plug zero in for x. For x-intercepts, we plug zero in for f of x or zero in for y. 
Use the graph of f of x equals that function to approximate its zeros, then find its zeros algebraically. So I estimate them at, uh, that'd be negative 2. How about uh, x equals negative 3, x equals, uh, I don't know, 2.5. Let's say 2.5. To find the actual x-intercepts, so the zeros or the solutions, we're going to plug 0 in for y or set this function equal to 0. So let's factor. We have 2x and x, and then I need a 1 in the middle. I can do that by, uh, let's see, we have plus 3 here and minus 5. That's positive 6, negative 5, that gives me a positive 1 in the middle. Uh, so we have 2x minus 5 equals 0, 2x equals 5, x equals 5 halves, which is actually 2 and a half. And then uh, x plus 3 equals 0, x is equal to negative 3. Use the graph of each function to approximate its zeros, then find its zeros algebraically. So I, I estimate this at 0, so x equals 0, how about uh, 2, and maybe uh, 1 and a half. Let's factor this. We have uh, 0 is equal to, what can I take out? I can take out an x. That's 3x squared minus 10x plus 8. And uh, we have 0 is equal to x times, I have 3x here and an x there. I need factors of 8 combined with 3 are going to give me 10. So how about uh, minus 2 and minus 4? That's negative 6 and negative 4. That's negative 10. So x equals 0, x equals 4 thirds, x equals 2 are the three zeros. On 4b, uh, we just, if we're going to set this equal to 0, to find the zeros, I can square both sides, and 0 squared is, you know, 0. So really we need the inside of the radical to be 0. So we have negative 1 equals 4t, t equals negative 1 fourth. Test for symmetry. The graph of a relation is symmetric with respect to the x-axis if and only if, for every point x, y on the graph, the point x, negative y is also on the graph. So if we're symmetric about the x-axis, then uh, negative y and y gives us the same x value. If you want the test, replace y with negative y produces an equivalent equation. The graph of a relation is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, if and only if for every point x, y on the graph, the point negative x, y is also on the graph. So there's a reflection over the y-axis. Replace x with negative x produces an equivalent equation. And then on the last one, the graph of a relation is symmetric with respect to the origin, if and only if for every point x, y on the graph, the point negative x, negative y is also on the graph. So this one is symmetric through the origin. Replacing x with negative x and y with negative y produces an equivalent equation. Use the graph of each equation to test for symmetry with respect to the x, y-axis, and the origin. Support the answer numerically, then confirm algebraically. Uh, so we have uh, our graph over here of x minus y squared equals 1. We can see that it is symmetric over the x-axis. But now let's show that. And to, to prove that, we can plug uh, negative y in for y, and we should get the exact same thing. And when we square negative y squared, we get y squared. So it's the same thing. We have symmetry across the x-axis. On this one, we see that it is symmetric across the origin, or about the origin, and they tell us that if uh, we plug in negative x for x and plug in negative y for y, we should get the same thing, and a negative times a negative uh, is uh, positive, so we do get the exact same thing. Even in odd functions, functions that are symmetric with respect to the y-axis are even. Functions that are symmetric with the origin are called odd. And so for even, we can write f of negative x is equal to f of x. And if the function is odd, then f of negative x should equal negative f of x. Graph each function. Analyze the graph to determine whether each function is even, odd, or neither. Confirm algebraically. If odd or even, describe the symmetry of the graph of the function. Uh, we're going to skip the graphing part. We're just going to go right to uh, the algebraic piece of this. Now, let's test, for, let's test for even. 
which means f of x should equal f of negative x. Uh, now, we already know what f of x is. It's right there. Let's see what f of negative x would be. So negative x to the third minus 2 times negative x should produce the exact same thing. But it doesn't. Negative x to the third is negative x to the third, and then we'd have plus <clears throat> 2x. That is not the same. Let's test for odd. With odd, f of negative x should be equal to negative f of x. Well, we already have f of negative x. So negative x to the third plus 2x should equal the opposite of this right here, which is negative x to the third plus 2x. And we find out that those are the exact same thing. This is an odd function. And we're supposed to describe the symmetry. And so we say symmetric about the origin. Let's test for even on this one. Uh, with even, g of x is equal to g of negative x. And so uh, g of x is x to the fourth plus 2. And g of negative x is negative x to the fourth plus 2. Now, if you take a, a negative to an even power, that's going to be positive. We have x to the fourth plus 2. Now, those are equal to each other. This is an even function. And this is symmetric about the y-axis. All right, let's test even for this one. So h of x has to equal h of negative x. So let's plug a negative in. We have negative x to the third minus 0.5 negative x squared minus 3 times negative x, which is negative x to the third, and that'll be uh, minus 0.5x squared, because this will go to a plus, and then plus 3x. And this is certainly not equal to this. Uh, that plus, uh, the minus at the beginning, the plus at the end, not the same. Uh, for odd, we need uh, h of negative x equals negative h of x. Well, we already have, uh, let's see, we already have the h of negative x right here. We just found that, so we don't have to, to work it again. But now, is that equal to the opposite of h of x? We have negative x to the third plus 0.5x squared plus 3x. That's the opposite of that function right there. Well, the negatives work, but these are po one's a positive, one's a negative. So this one is neither. It's not odd or even.